Hello again. Welcome to module two. Uh, in this module, we're going to be talking a little bit about um, making content instruction more accessible to English language learners. And we are using Anna Hernandez's text, um, making content instruction accessible for English language learners uh, to accomplish that task. And so this is a much more practical look. So if, if module one was theoretical, where we looked at uh, world English is, and we, we thought about different varieties of English and the ways that that impacts our instruction, this is a much more hands-on approach. Um, in addition to being more hands-on, um, I want to say that this was something that was specifically designed for a K-12 space. And one of the things that you find when you're researching best practice in English language instruction is that much of uh, it's the instruction that's outlined um, is for the K-12 space. That's where a lot of explicit English language instruction happens. Um, but I'm excited about some of the opportunities here because a lot of what uh, is outlined in Ana Hernandez's text is uh, applicable to the applications that we have uh, in academic support settings, like in the Learning Center. Um, and there also are some practical applications for um, folks who are looking for classroom modifications, either for embedded tutoring scenarios or uh, in their own instruction to modify and adapt instru uh, their, their practice to make it more accommodating for English language learners. And so I want to walk through some of these uh, pieces, but this is certainly not going to be exhaustive. Um, and I found that this text, uh, though a bit longer than our last text, is, is very accessible. And I just wanted to highlight before I got into uh, a brief overview, um, one of the things that she outlines on page 127 here that I thought um, was, was appropriate to mention uh, states that in content instruction, it's important for students to learn the structures of the English language in order to interpret the work of related readings across subject matter instruction. So we're thinking about content, uh, content tutoring, content support. The, bil the ability of English language learners to succeed in content learning has to do with how well they can infer meaning, draw conclusions, learn terminology, analyze problems, and synthesize information from various sources, which means they need to transfer and apply reading and language conventions across the curriculum. And if I skip down, when language is regarded as a medium of learning, it offers a context for communication the thinking process and the subject matter without the need to translate content. So one of the one of my takeaways as I'm, I'm looking at this is that the Learning Center does this for uh, L1 English students. We allow first language English students, we give those students the opportunity to um, negotiate the meaning of ideas and we give them structures to help them synthesize their ideas. We give them outlines, we give them rubrics, we give them all kinds of tools that help them bring their ideas into concert with the ideas of others. This is great news for English language support because it really just means applying those same tools or similar tools, but layering in negotiating the ideas of language. So in a lot of a lot of ways, that's um, using synonyms. It's using uh, multiple ideas to represent multiple examples to represent an idea. Um, and so Ana Hernandez breaks this down. So if I share my screen here, She breaks this down in a couple of ways. She talks about the importance of communicative skills, which that's our approach. Um, that's, that's research shows that the best approach to authentic language teaching is uh, CLT, it's communicative language teaching, that we learn best by mimicking um, communications, common authentic communications that happen within a language. Um, this is separate from grammar translation, which if you learned uh, a language in high school, um, 
as a foreign language, you probably did a lot of grammar translation. You probably did a decent amount of conjugating. You memorized a lot of uh, verb tenses. You probably looked at um, vocabulary acquisition as a key component. These are all essential aspects or essential pieces to uh, grammar translation uh, language instruction. What we're focusing on and what this, this article really out, outlines the importance of is focusing on a communicative objective, being able to communicate clearly in a target language, in this case, English. Um, many students who come to us with English as a foreign language from um, another country have experienced English as a foreign language as grammar translation and typically uh, are much better at reading the language and understanding that, that kind of formation than they are at articulating it because they haven't had that communicative practice. Uh, emphasizing cognitive skills and reading and learning strategies. So what's great about understanding the shifts that we're suggesting in, in academic support is that it really doesn't require us to think about our sessions much differently. Most of what we do in academic support and really even in content instruction and teaching is providing students strategies and perspectives and ways to um, interact with content and to synthesize ideas and synthesize content. Um, so communication-based instruction, we're, in the article, you're gonna read a little bit about how it mirrors the ways that children acquire their first language. However, it's important to note that we don't learn a language in the exact same way. But children do learn and acquire language by being immersed in that language. And they're figuring the language out and transacting. And you hear kids when they're first learning language do all kinds of, of interesting things with words, right? Um, and it just is because they're trying to take what they know and they're trying to fit it into the framework of what they don't. I'm trying to think of interesting things that kids do with words, but it's not coming to me right now. Um, but that's why ELLs, English language learners, benefit from opportunities to interact meaningfully with the content, but pace it and make sure that they know that it's okay. We're going to talk about in, in our next module, we'll talk about negotiating the session and pacing. But they really benefit from opportunities to construct meaning and engage in dialogue. Um, understand that even when we're engaged in content-based instruction, really that's that's just communicative practice in an authentic setting. And so students have similar needs, but this is why it's so important that students reach that B2, that upper um, upper intermediate level of proficiency. Because if you're still struggling to negotiate the basic terms of a language and articulate like your perspectives and your ideas, Adding content-specific vocabulary makes it almost, almost untenable uh, for students to learn new content. And so it's okay to check in with students and say, hey, how much of this, like, what are you struggling with? Are you struggling with uh, these terms or are you struggling with all of the language? And if they're struggling with all the language, then um, maybe some more, some more discipline-specific, or excuse me, some more language-specific instruction um, is necessary. And one of the things that <clears throat> language acquisition requires is for students to shift between um, linguistic models. And the more we can do to help them um, organize the material that they're trying to acquire in the target language, the more time they have. So they're not remembering the structure of the ideas as well as the ideas themselves. Right, so if we're laying out steps and we're describing that there's multiple steps in, I don't know, cellular respiration or something, it's important that, that we give them a visual that lays out those steps so that they can visualize and also begin to process the language. Um, graphic organizers, summaries, you know, using um, assistive generative uh, AI to um, simplify complex uh, terms, readings, might be a helpful way to support that. Um, and then study strategies. You know, understanding how to organize notes, 
take notes, helping them to use assistive technologies, uh, speech to text, recordings, um, you know, Microsoft Teams in their classrooms so that they can generate a transcript, using that transcript to simplify major concepts, really synthesizing and consolidating um, what they're learning into terms that they can um, that they can translanguage, right? That they can they can uh, play around with the conventions of the language, um, and fostering a metacognitive awareness of the kinds of things that work and the kinds of things that don't. Um, one of the best things that we can do for um, for students who are learning a new language, who are learning English, is to give them time on task to talk about ideas out loud in the target language. And um, sometimes just listening and reflecting back and giving them an opportunity to revise, right? That back and forth is something that they might not be getting anywhere but in the session. And so um, as you're reading uh, Ana Hernandez's uh, text, think a little bit about the ways in which the, the ideas, the principles in that text could help you in individual sessions. And in the discussion board, um, you're going to be asked to reflect on some of the ways that you, you already do that and maybe some spaces where you could improve this. Um, thank you so much again and look forward to reading your responses in the discussion board.